Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's uh, episode, I'm going to talk about this product behind me called GoBoard. GoBoard is a waterproof tile backer board that you put on uh, tub walls, shower walls, and that sort of thing. It is made out of foam, it's lightweight, it's high tech, and it's very easy to install. So this is a sponsored post. John's Manville, the maker of GoBoard, is helping to support my channel. And I'm gonna talk about this product and I'm gonna show you how to install it around these exact tub walls that I've already done. Here's the, the tub that I'm gonna be installing the backer board in today. And you always wanna make sure that your framing is up to, you know, it's 16 inches on center. You got studs in the corners, uh, backing for the shower glass and, and blocking around the base of the tub, that sort of thing. So it's not what this video is about, but you do wanna make sure that the, the framing is up to par um, before installing this. So to install GoBoard backer board, you're gonna need the GoBoard backer board itself. You're going to need some GoBoard sealant. And this is a typical for the seams. You're going to need a caulk gun for the GoBoard sealant. You're gonna need a trowel, some sort of a of trowel. It can be, it doesn't have to be a shiny metal one like this, but a plastic one is fine. And I also have this one here for the corners. And again, plastic is just fine. You're going to need a tape measure and a pencil to mark with. You'll need some cement backer board screws and a razor knife to cut. And you'll need some sort of a, a driver for the screws along with a, a tip for these. So this is the right tip for this type of screw. And additionally, I recommend some sort of a, either a four foot or six foot straight edge that you will be able to lay along the board and cut with. Okay, so there's two different ways to install go board. One is that you, you would take the sealant and you would apply the sealant to every edge prior to putting the board in. So in other words, after we, we would have put it on the, the bottom of the tub there, or the, the top of the tub flange, I should say, and then we would put the board in, install this board, and then, and then apply the sealant on this edge again, and then put the next sheet on and compress that sealant. Today, I'm gonna to show the other method. And the other method is you put all the board up, and then you come in with the sealant later and do all the sealant after the fact. That way you don't always have you know, your, the gloves on and you're not moving back and forth with the glue and all that sort of things. What is critical though, in doing it that way, putting the board up first, then coming through and do the sealant, is we need to make sure that all the gaps are in here because we need the sealant to actually get inside in between those gaps. And so we need an eighth of an inch gap everywhere. So to make sure, that we keep our spacing. I'm gonna use these eighth inch horseshoe spacers. These are for tile, and they come eighth inch, sixteenth inch, three sixteenths, whatever. So I'm gonna use the eighth inch ones, and I'm gonna make sure that these fit right in, in here in between the sheets, and also in the corners and underneath on the tub flange, and everywhere we're gonna need an eighth of an inch gap. Now you don't have to use these. It doesn't really matter how you get the eighth of an inch. If you wanna use uh, some other tool, you can do that. This is what I have, I'm a tile guy, and I got eighth inch horseshoe spacers. You might use these when you do your tile too. So one of the nice things is you can even just take this uh, screw and just kind of get it even started here. And then hold it up and screw her in. Okay, so I've got, I went ahead and marked the studs with a pencil line, I, I used my level to do that. And then I put a mark every six inches on the studs. Can I see this one over here? And so you can see that's, they, that's where my screws will go, is every six inches. And then I'm a half inch on each, on each of the edges here, top and bottom edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and put screws in on this panel. Thank you. 
So I'm going to put this next panel in now. And I'm going to use these horseshoes and put them in between the sheets and make sure I got the eighth of an inch gap, just like I do down below. So let me get going on this. And keep in mind, this is where go board shines because you can lift it with one hand. I can set it on the edge of the tub. It's not going to hurt it. And I'm just using two fingers here to hold this up. Let's go ahead and get this up here. And it's not too heavy. And I'm going to put this, oops, one of these here. And the other one over here. And then that way I have this eighth of an inch gap. And then I'll go ahead and screw this on. Half inch within the edge there. And let's take care of the top. Half inch. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and, and now that I've got this one set, I'm going to go ahead and screw the, the screws in there and then we'll, we'll get the top piece cut in. Kind of a nice way to do this here. So for the top piece here, I am going to measure each end and take that measurement. And remember, we want an eighth of an inch gap at the top of the sheet. And then I'm going to go ahead and put an eighth of an inch gap at the ceiling just to make sure there's a little bit of wiggle room up there. So what I'm going to do is measure each end and take a quarter of an inch off each measurement. So I've got the, the go board sort of precariously perched on this stand. So because of that, I have to kind of keep it balanced and that's why the cutting's going slowly. Uh, normally you don't need to cut quite this slowly. So I've got my piece cut and I'm going to go ahead and put it on up here with eighth inch spacing. Okay, so what, now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and cut in the sheet for the, you know, the shower faucet valve wall here. So what I'm going to do is cut around this thing and cut a hole for this, the, the spout. So I'm actually going to just use the spacer here and run the tape right off. I'm going to put the eighth inch spacer down at the bottom here and take the measurement for there and also the one for this shower valve. Now you may not have this type of valve. Um, you may have uh, a different kind, or you may be remodeling. Uh, typically, you know, if you buy a new shower faucet, it has some sort of a, a ring around here that it wants you to cut around. And so that's what you should do is cut around that. 
Now, if you don't have, um, if you're doing a remodel and you're not replacing this, typically you want about a four inch hole um, around the shower valve. And that way you can, you'll be able to get to the parts in there and the cover ring will fit back on. So I'm gonna cut around this. I'm gonna use this as a template. So here I'm marking the two holes that I'm gonna cut, one for the shower valve and one for the tub spout, the outlet. And I'm tracing around, I'm using this as the template. The white uh, circle fits inside, so I, I'm cutting it, I'm tracing it big, and then I will cut it a little bit big around there. And here I'm just using a utility knife to make this cut. Okay, for this, we can do the same thing, cut around it, a drill, and this is an inch and three eighths if anybody cares about that. So here's the board and I got the two cuts, so I'm just going to start, you know, like I said, you bring it in here, it's not real heavy, you can rest it on the tub. And I'm just going to bring it in, and I'm going to start with the faucet there. And the shower valve. And get it up there. And look at my spacing over here. And I do have spacing over there. Everything fits. Let me check down below. Spacing is pretty good. I might just cut a little bit. So let me, let me do that here real quick. I'm going to draw right on here and then i'm going to pull it off so i'm just going to trim this just a little bit right here and keep in mind if this were cement board you'd have a bunch of little chunks in the tub and then you'd be grinding them into the tub or you'd have to take this thing all the way back outside so <clears throat> there's that i'm going to put it right back on here there we go and there's my space under the tub and then there is spacing over here. I'm just going to score the back of it here. So what I did with this piece is I left it long past the wall. I just left a full piece and let it run past that end wall. So you can see I'm scoring the back of it here and I'm folding it over and we'll snap it back to cut the excess off. I've got this piece already cut. Uh, with a gap. I'm going to go ahead and install that and then we'll get going on the other side. So for this wall here, I wanted to go, I wanted to match this other wall. So the other wall I went out to the end, that was 35 and a quarter. So for this wall, I'm going to just bring it out to 35 and a quarter. So with, with go board and with any backer board, you can't have the ends just, just end on nothing. And so I actually, I added this piece in right here and the go board will stop here. There'll be drywall from here over and this will give it something uh, solid, some backing to uh, be secure to. You know, you can't just have that seam on nothing uh, on the verticals.
So like I mentioned before, you always want to make sure that the board is in front of the flange. And it's okay if it hangs over too far. And with this, we are definitely in front all the way across. So we've got the two legs on each side of the tub here. Uh, I like to have the, the backer board be on each leg because, you know, if any water gets in here, whatever the low side of the tub is, any water that drips on the outside of the glass can run down. And then if it's just drywall here, it's going to ruin that, you know, over time. So I always like to have the backer board go down uh, on each end of the leg. So we're just going to continue this line down. You can see I got this weird little angle. I'm going to fill that in the best I can and keep uh, just a little bit of gap around the tub here. Keep a gap in here again, and we'll fill that piece in. So I got a piece here. Should be close to about the same size here. So let's uh, get an idea where this is. And this is So that's roughly, I think, if I've calculated correctly. Now the tub's got a curve here. I'm going to go ahead and just use something. I'm actually going to use this spacer, but you know, use whatever you got on hand. I'm just going to draw in the little curve. And that should be close. to cut myself. And it worked pretty good. I didn't have the uh, the curve cut all the way through, but that still worked pretty good here. So I'm just going to kind of score the curve a little bit back here. Yeah, let's see what this is shaping up to look like here. More close. So I'm going to cut this little angle right here. Okay. Right there is pretty good. There's a little bit of a gap all the way around. Maybe I'll trim that just a little bit right there. But that's pretty good. There's enough for the sealant to get in and seal that gap. So we are pretty good. Man. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to get to the sealant. Let's assess where we are here. We got the board up, and let's just admire the handiwork here. Let me. We have screws every six inches. There's definitely gaps in here, gaps in the corners. Screws are pretty good for depth. There might be a stray one here or there. 
but they're every six inches they're within a half inch on the edges and we got gaps I'll show underneath here gaps around here gaps underneath okay so what I'm gonna do it now is I'm gonna tape off the edge and we are ready to get the glue and to start covering the seams right now this is not waterproof we're gonna make it waterproof so I've got the, you can see I got the perimeter taped and that's just to keep the adhesive off of there and one other thing I want to show let me see here on this joint right here I, what I figure is my tile is going to come about right there So what I did is I made, the, I, I made a mark inside of that and put blue tape over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this with the sealant and then I'm going to peel this tape off and then that way this edge from here over won't get sealant. And so the tile should cover the sealant. And then that way this wall over here stays finished drywall. You don't want the sealant getting past the edge of the finished tile. So I got the go board sealant. I'm going to use it in a caulk gun. Then I'm going to cut the tip. Now, I don't know how to describe. About that big. You don't want it too big because you do want the sealant to get in the joint. Keep in mind, this caulk gun, there's another seal down in here. Okay? This caulk gun does not have a little poker thing like a lot of them do. So, I'm going to use this thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to fill this, this gap with sealant and I'm going to come in and you want to force the sealant in and then we're ultimately we want an inch of sealant on each side of this joint. So what I'm recommending is do it in two passes. Do the first pass and get the sealant in the joint and then come back over, smooth it over and then come back over and put some more in and make sure you get your one inch on each side. And I got the sleeves rolled up. I'm going to grab some gloves here in a little bit, but it's a little bit tricky trying to do the cameras and gloves and all that stuff. But all I'm going to do here is start out, and I'm going to force the sealant into this joint here. And I want to make sure it's getting in there good. And just smear it in there, make sure it gets in there good. And then I'm going to come back with a second pass eventually. I'm just trying to show this on camera here. And we're going to get a whole bunch in here. And make sure we get good coverage with that. Okay, I'm going to get some gloves on and I'm going to switch up the cameras a little bit. And I'm going to try and get some close ups on what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay. And you want to make sure the screw holes. And if you get a little excess, just go ahead and fill the screws while you're at it. So the verticals are going to do the same thing, which is the, the corner tool. So get the sealant in the joint. And then we want to make sure we get that. And come back down. Just gonna put it in there, make sure to get it in. And make sure it gets in that joint. But see, there we are, and it's getting in there. And then I'm gonna come back through and fill that in. I'm gonna come back through. And 
Make sure that that just coats over everything. Maybe even do it the other way. Make sure it gets in there good. So now I'm going to fill this seam in and protect it from the tape, or the tape will protect it from going over. Okay, I'm going to smooth this seam a little bit. What I'm doing is angling it a little bit this way to keep the, the flow coming this way. And I'm just going to kind of smooth that out there, run it the other way. If you want, I'm going to show you what I do with this seam right here. And it is extra messy. I'm getting the gloves, okay? So tune in. Okay, so I'm going to put some mesh tape on this joint here. I'm going to put this in here. Right across this seam. Okay, this is not a go board policy. This is just something that I like to do. And then I'm going to come in here. And... And smooth it again. I'm going to start in the middle because sometimes it'll bunch up on you. And kind of hit it like this. And I'll put some even more in there. Now you see why I got the tape on there. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it around here while I'm at it. And that way this tub seam, everything's kind of just tucked away in there. And for here, can you see this one down here? A little bit. I don't touch my camera at this point. Okay, that's what we're doing. There's a screw right there. I want to make sure that that gets covered. me in the way of the camera a little bit. Okay, here's where it gets goopy.
more to shocker. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to take whatever I got and make sure these nail holes or screw holes are all filled. These ones I'm not going to worry about on the edge here because that's outside the wet area. Uh, but everything in here I'm going to worry about. Now, if you're wondering about this here, you can fill this in around here. This, this shower valve actually has a piece um, of fabric that goes around here and it's made for this. With this, uh, if you know that this is going to be the finished piece, you could, you could caulk that in. Um, I would probably just wait to do it later um, when, once you get the finished piece in there. So here's my good edge. And then not a bad idea to take a little bit of alcohol. This is denatured alcohol. And just make sure that there's no glue residue on here. And if there is, this will take it off. Okay, so here's where we are. We've got sealant on the seams. And we've got sealant over the nail holes or screw holes. We've got sealant in the corners. Outside edge is sealed. Sealing around the tub. Sealing down the edge. So that's it for GoBoard. It's about as easy of an installation as you can hope for. And here you are, you're waterproof and ready to tile. So if you want to find out where to buy it, check the link on my website. And I appreciate you tuning in and subscribe to my channel.